Well, as we mentioned, French President Macron is in Guinea-Bissau this Thursday, the last stop on his trip in Western Africa. And we will take you now live to Guinea-Bissau, where the president is holding a press conference with, with his counterpart, Umaro Sissoko Mbalo. Let's listen in. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President and the delegation. I have just completed uh, a discussion with the French president, President Emmanuel Macron, a personal friend and a friend of our country, Guinea-Bissau. So I'm very moved, I must say, because it is the first time that a French president is visiting Guinea-Bissau. So this is an important moment for us, and I would like to thank you, Mr. President, and your delegation. Your presence here today in Bissau testifies to the great interest you have in our continent, generally speaking, and in the countries of West Africa in particular. We are really counting with France, and we're really counting on France, and this visit testifies to the connection you have with Africa and more particularly with Guinea-Bissau. I therefore deem that uh, we already have an excellent cooperation that will be reinforced in all fields and in particular in security matters and others. Today, we are facing Terrorism, and terrorism is not only restricted to the Sahel region, the whole of Africa is faced with this squad. So I am hoping that uh, with France, and I hope, uh, or rather I know that your agenda does not uh, allow you to stay longer in our country, but I hope we'll be able to collaborate. And I now give you the floor just for you to extend your message to the people in Guinea-Bissau. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, ministers, members of parliament, excellencies, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm extremely honored, uh, having heard what you just said, and honored as well of being, um, being the first French president to be hosted here in Guinea-Bissau. So allow me to say how proud I am and how proud my delegation is for uh, visiting your country. And I'd like to thank you for the very warm welcome you extended to us all. We decided on the principle of the visit when you visited us in France, in Paris, Mr. President, and I would like to congratulate uh, you, Mr. President, for your election at the head of ECOWAS. And I would like to pay tribute to Nanuku Fua Hado, his predecessor, who defended the values and principle of ECOWAS. But now that you've taken over the presidency of uh, this regional organization, it is in a very difficult context that of a security challenge for the whole of West Africa with the increase of terrorism and with uh, the additional talent challenge it represents for security and the threat of uh, coups. So we have a key agenda and we have discussed this this morning. We discussed the bilateral situation and the situation in uh, Guinea-Conakry and Guinea-Bissau and others. And we have discussed the challenge and the difficulties uh, that are linked to the situation. I repeated to you, Mr. President, the determination France has to remain in Sahel and in the region, but also to change our doctrine and the modalities of our doctrine, to be able to provide support to the armies in training um, and military equipment, but not to substitute ourselves uh, to the local military forces. And the only strategy that can be effective to counter uh, terrorism is to have a security agenda to serve the local states, but also a political agenda to make sure the countries return to a self-determination, and also an agenda of determination and a creation of projects, educational, economic, and uh, uh, related to the development. 
So we're talking about a synergy, a real synergy between our political, security and development agendas that can only be effective in fighting terrorism. And it's exactly the same thing that I said to President Talon yesterday. Given the context, President uh, Sissoko Mbalo expressed his desire uh, to organize things in the next uh, few weeks and to organize a summit of ECOWAS, uh, to which he wished to invite France to attend, uh, to um, attend the meetings. And I would like to say how willing I will be to cooperate to this end. We also exchange our, our um, our concerns about uh, the increasing violences against the population in the Sahel region, in the whole of the sub-region, and in particular acts perpetrated by mercenaries deployed in Mali and whose acts have been documented by UN reports. And these are the men of Wagner, not to mention them. I also shared with uh, President Sissoko and Balo the concern of France and uh, the alert, uh, uh, we would like to say, of what is considered might be concerned uh, or assimilate to acts of terrorism are really acts of violence against the poor population. It is urgent uh, to thwart these actions that might destabilize, uh, destabilize the whole of the region. And there is a primary responsibility of the local states uh, to bring uh, the perpetrators uh, to court and sanction them. All of this goes to show how complicated our agenda is, but the need there is for us to act together. And in the end, I would like to talk about our bilateral cooperation. As for Guinea-Bissau, I would like to say we would like to condemn firmly uh, the attempt of a coup in February last and all the efforts that have been made uh, to ensure stability. I would like to extend my support uh, to the president in his fight against drug trafficking and any kind of traffic that might destabilize the country. In the past, we had a very strong and dense cooperation with Guinea-Bissau that was interrupted by the civil war in 98, and today we wish to participate in the reopening of the country towards international partners that is allowed uh, by this new stability. In this respect, France will continue supporting the economy of your country in a context that is heavily impacted by the pandemic of COVID-19 and made even worse by the war in Ukraine. After a global 1.5 billion euro uh, financial support, France will grant a new budgetary help of 3 million euro following our discussion. And I hope to be able to complete uh, this financial support by more. We are also going to fund a project in agriculture of 1.5 million euro called DFAM to train new agricultures at the academy in Yamoussoukro. This is an original project that gives a real sense to the efforts uh, put in by your country, and I hope we can carry on with the project and add to it by building a reinforced cooperation in the agricultural and food industry to increase the production, the local production, by training locals in different uh, lines of agriculture, namely the production of rice. I also like to. I would also like to highlight the importance of uh, the French language in Guinea-Bissau. There is an increasing number of French speakers in the country, and will be there uh, to uh, feel this uh, momentum with a new uh, school for French. And our objective with additional investors is to open this school uh, at the beginning of the year 2023. We also decided to, to reinforce our bilateral cooperation in the field of defence by uh, working on providing additional military equipment, training military personnel, and fighting uh, piracy at sea. That's what I wanted to say if, um, as regards our international agenda and our bilateral cooperation. And I would like to pay tribute to uh, the basketballer uh, committed to sports in uh, Guinea-Bissau. And uh, with the French Development Agency in Africa, we're going to launch an ambitious program for uh, education in the field of sports to the benefit of more than 15,000 high school pupils. This is another example of our mutual cooperation. We're very happy and proud to be able to keep it alive through our diaspora, by nationals and all of those uh, who keep the bilateral relations uh, uh, nurtured. 
This is a step, a historical step in our relationship, and uh, our presence here in the country testifies to it, but it's only one step one step, because we still have much to do, many projects ahead of us, and your ambition is high, and we have a lot of affection and friendship for you and for your people. So we'll be here in the long term. Thank you very much. My first question is to President Macron. Since 1966, there have been initial contributions. Three axes have been defined, one of them being security, training, and equipment. What is the responsibility of France in this respect, Mr. President? My second question is to President Sissoko. We have been suffering the consequences of the conflict between Ukraine and Russia. On this particular point, Africans have condemned on the attack of one country of, of another. Mr. President, are you going to condemn this aggression? Thank you very much for your question. Well, of course, Guinea-Bissau, in spite of being a non-aligned country, we condemn the aggression on Ukraine. Uh, and I think that now, in the 21st century, we cannot, we cannot accept war being waged between neighboring countries because we've seen the repercussions of this war uh, on the whole world, not only in Russia or in Ukraine. We are all suffering from the consequences of this aggression. Guinea-Bissau several times called um, uh, for not going any further, not going further in this war. So our position has been very clear on this uh, war between Russia and Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, sir for your question. And first of all, I would like to pay tribute to the clarity of what President Sissoko just said. In four continent that has fought so much for the sovereignty of its people and for its territorial integrity, it's unbelievable that on European soil, the only power that uh, threatens the territorial integrity and counters the sovereignty of the people is Russia. And how can people who've been close to Russia uh, in their history can they accept what has happened or be ambiguous uh, relative to a unilateral aggression of a country and denying its sovereignty? I do not understand this, so I can only pay tribute to what the president just said, which, uh, which testifies to historical consistency. As for our bilateral cooperation, I said we've had a long-standing cooperation uh, that started after the independence and all the way up to 98. But then, after the civil war, things never start or restarted the way they were. But our conviction for Guinea-Bissau itself is that we need to reinforce our connection and our agenda. And for the stability of the region, we need to reinforce our agenda. Our will is to do a lot more in terms of training, Vocational training, because that is the key, and that's why we're going to open a new French school here. And to increase our cooperation, that's why we've also decided to deploy cooperation in the field of sports. The synergy there is between sports and education is important to us. Second thing, we also believe in a cultural cooperation that is a lot stronger than it is. We have members of the diaspora who are 
Uh, at the center of the projects we're carrying, and we have the desire to reinforce these cultural projects with the present. Thirdly, we believe in an agricultural and uh, food production uh, changer. And what we expect uh, from Guinea-Bissau is that it develops its uh, food and agricultural autonomy not to be able or, or to be able not to suffer from the pressures uh, uh, from external powers. So we want to have the possibility of ensuring uh, the production of what people consume here. That's the responsibility of your country and our responsibility is to do whatever we can to support that by accompanying, by training, and by providing support. In the field of security, I will, we will say we would like to support you in fighting against drug traffickers and other predators and to stabilize the country and have military forces that are there to serve a democratic institution, you know, to fight instability and terrorism everywhere in the region. That's what the president desires, and we're here to support his policy. This is how we see the next step of our cooperation of the contract we're launching is a well-balanced partnership to serve a project that is meant to reinforce a democratic state, ensuring food autonomy, and to train the youth in education and sports and to serve the population. Good afternoon. I'm from the uh, AFP. Now that uh, the sanctions have been lifted against Mali, what kind of lever do you want to use with the president of ECOWAS vis-à-vis uh, -vis the junta? And you, Mr. President, what do you respond to the, t the um, criticism saying that, uh, the ECO that ECOWAS is going to be uh, driven uh, undercover by other powers? I think the position of ECOWAS is pretty clear and straight. Forward. Of course, we've removed the sanctions against Mali. Little by little, we've lifted them. We've lifted the economic sanctions. I was in Conakry with uh, the president and with the commission to try and explain to the military junta the decision made by the summit and the heads of state and that this transition cannot last for longer than 24 months. We managed to convince them that 36 months was too long. And uh, we did the same thing with Burkina Faso. Very soon, uh, the Minister of State uh, Foreign Affairs of Guinea-Bissau is going to travel to Mali to meet with the military junta. And after that, I will travel to Mali to discuss matters with our brothers in Mali. And I think we're going to reach an agreement because it's very important uh, that we manage to complete this transition in Mali, in Guinea-Conakry, and in um, Burkina Faso. Of course, on the table, we already have the project of an anti-putsch uh, force. And this is going to allow uh, everybody to understand that we are now in the 21st century and uh, having uh, cooled in a country to take over uh, the country with the military power it is um, being used as a fast track. No, that's not possible, as I said, like President Macron. There is a real procedure to uh, reach the position of head of state. and. Uh, we live in democratic powers, and the people are those who sanction uh, the president, even if sometimes the people um, uh, support uh, coups. But we have to work with um, the democratic institution, not with military coups. And now regarding Mali, I'm sure we're going to find the right agenda with ECOWAS. Uh, and uh, in conformity with the summit in Accra. To answer your question, allow me to remind you that France intervened in Mali in 2013 because Mali uh, was threatened by terrorist groups and on upon request of ECOWAS, we always respect uh, the position of this regional organization, which is a very important one, and I always consider that our role was to come in in support of uh, the positions taken by ECOWAS and in conformity with its decision. That's why ECOWAS condemned the first military coup and the second uh, military coup uh, in Mali. 
the current president, with all of its teams, uh, worked to clarify the elements of transition. Part of the sanctions have been lifted in Mali, but not all of them. But so I think the responsibility of ECOWAS is to work towards um, making sure that the people in Mali can recover the means to express its popular sovereignty. We cannot consider that it's a good thing for the people in Mali to have a military junta that has taken over uh, by a military coup. I think that's the first function of ECOWAS in this respect. And secondly, we hope that ECOWAS can thereby build a framework for stability, allowing the people's sovereignty to be expressed. The choice is made by the military junta in, in Mali, and it's de facto Com um, complicity with uh, uh, the Wagner group is not effective to fight uh, terrorism. So these are two priorities, and the two priorities of ECOWAS to express very clearly by President Sissoko. I was informed by President Sissoko Mbalo of the desire of ECOWAS to build a new force to fight uh, any kind of uh, coups or uh, military coups uh, in all countries. And I think this is a very, or having this force is a very useful instrument uh, to fight instability in the region. And in this region, military groups have used uh, the resulting weakening of states that have been weakened either by terrorists or by, uh, by military coups to take over the power. So France will carry on working the region, uh, serving legitimate sovereign states and serving regional organizations because we believe that our role is to help the region succeed in fighting terrorism. It's important for African states, but it's important for us all. And we hope to be able uh, uh, to work towards the development and uh, the prosperous development of the youth in the region. Africa 24, Mr. President, I suppose that you are familiar with Africa 24, a media leader and official partner of the African Union. My question is uh, addressed to both of you. Which role do you believe the leading media can play in valuing the cooperation between Africa and Europe? My next question, my second one, is the for President Sumaru Sissoko Mbalo. Mr. President, we, you recently indicated uh, in a meeting with Africa 24 that there are no small states, but also that all states are on the same footing. So what are the prospects for the future now that for the first time uh, a French president is um, on an official visit in Guinea-Bissau? And lastly, my third question goes to President Emmanuel Macron. In the framework of your, your trip to Africa, you mentioned that you were putting forward uh, new relations or you were developing new relations uh, with countries in Africa. What kind of role do you expect Guinea-Bissau to play and Mr. Sissiko Mbalo as president to exert in this new framework? Thank you. Thank you, madam. It is true that uh, only recently we had meetings here, and I can say that it's only normal. There are no small states and big states. There are big countries, large countries, and that is why uh, the French president is here today uh, alongside the president of Guinea-Bissau. Some are stronger, some countries are stronger. But look at a president of a stronger country being here next to a smaller brother. This is solidarity today. I'm presiding over ECOWAS, and it's the first time that a Portuguese-speaking country is presiding ECOWAS. So that means that Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal, all large states as well. And according to this logic, there is no small state and larger states. There are states that are all on the same footing. Thank you. Thank you very much. In a nutshell, to answer your question, allow me to say that the will of Europe and the will of Europeans is to build a new partnership with African states and with the African Union, a partnership that is a balanced one, reciprocal one, and the summit that was held at the beginning of the year was conceived as such on the basis of these principles. Security is important. 
But this is a fight we are waging, a battle we are waging for education, for the youth, for biodiversity, fighting global warming. Uh, we are working towards solidarity and towards having Africa finding its own way and finding solutions. So we want to be partners of an autonomous development in Africa. All of this is at the core of our strategy here, one of the axes. I mean, these are some of the axes that, that are ours. But we want to do to renovate our approach. We want to conceive a common agenda. We want to flesh it out together. We want to carry it out together in full respect of the African continent and allowing it to live up to the challenges that are common to Africa, but also to us. Africa has had to uh, work uh, for its demography and to work for the youth and to train them. I think that in the context you, the media, are playing is to be able to carry out your, your role and to have uh, to, ex to exercise your independent uh, opinion and judgment and to inform the people in Africa. I think this is an indispensable what you're waging because Africa is also a victim of misinformation. There are more and more agents of propaganda waging more and more influence. So any journalist trying to uh, work in full independence and in full autonomy uh, works towards independence. As for the bilateral uh, relations uh, we have and the role played by Guinea-Bissau in uh, my African trip, Guinea-Bissau has an important role to play, a key role to play, first of all because I just said and because of, uh, because of our discussion, training the youth, um, uh, the gender equality, fighting global warming and affording uh, biodiversity, all these are challenges as well as health. All of these are challenges for your country and then respect what we are doing to help you and what you will do to develop your, your own autonomy and strength is essential. And lastly, fighting terrorism is something that the president is working on here, nationally and in ECOWAS. So the role played by Guinea-Bissau is essential. Thank you very much. Thank you. Allow me to say one last thing. I would like to thank you, all of you, for the fantastic tribute uh, you have given to Francophony, not only your president, but uh, also the Portuguese-speaking journalists who are here today. Thank you very much. You've been listening to a live press conference by French President Macron and his uh, counterpart from Guinea-Bissau, Omar Sissoko Mbalo, as the French president wraps up a four-day trip across three Western African nations, Cameroon, Benin, and now Guinea-Bissau. He will be flying back to Paris within the next few minutes. Um, political editor Mark Perelman is with me here on set. Mark, you've been listening to, uh, to that press conference with us. Um, the French president outlining several areas of interest. Um, several areas of uh, to, to implement tactics to try to fight that growing destabilization in the region or that threat of destabilization because of the situation in the Sahel. Yes, uh, actually it was quite interesting because he did mention uh, the terrorist uh, threat, but also obviously uh, the threat of military coups. Uh, we've seen two coups actually in Mali, one in Burkina Faso, one in Guinea, not uh, this Guinea, although there was an attempted coup uh, back in February. Guinea-Bissau has seen a lot of uh, coup or attempted coups. And so there were two announcements that were uh, made, first of all, uh, the uh, rotating president of the uh, ECOWAS regional organization, uh, the president of Guinea-Bissau, uh, announced that there should be uh, uh, a meeting of ECOWAS soon and that France would be invited to participate. Uh, and Emmanuel Macron said that he was willing to respond to that invitation. There's no date, uh, no format exactly, but so that's one piece of information. Uh, the second piece of information is uh, the announcement again by the president of Guinea-Bissau of uh, uh, an objective to create a so-called anti-coup, anti-putsch uh, force. Uh, and uh, the French president then saying that he considered that it would be extremely efficient uh, if it was uh, to become a reality again. 
what shape, what form that, that would take uh, is obviously still a, a mystery. So, uh, but this indicates that, yes, the terrorist uh, threat is there. It's a major uh, challenge, but there's also a challenge uh, to democracy in uh, Western Africa that's quite uh, urgent and that needs to be uh, addressed. The, the French president, uh, not once but twice, also uh, criticized heavily uh, the Wagner Group, uh, the Russian private security uh, group, that did, uh, saying that uh, those mercenaries uh, should be condemned because they're not uh, defending uh, countries, and they're actually weakening uh, the fight against terrorism and committing uh, crimes and abuses. So uh, obviously uh, this was uh, a willingness by both uh, to uh, say that, yes, there should be a priority to fight terrorism, to defend democracy, but also to prevent Russian direct influence on the ground. Yeah, speaking of the Wagner Group and, and Russia's influences, I mean, the, the French president really repeated that criticism of Russia's ambitions in Africa throughout the, the, his trip. It's really been a, re a recurring theme. Absolutely. In each of his uh, press conferences, uh, sometimes without being asked, uh, he did say that Russia was fighting a multi-pronged uh, war. Yes, it was fighting, obviously, directly in Ukraine. And he saluted uh, a rather unusual statement uh, by uh, the president of Guinea-Bissau, who condemned uh, quite directly the aggression of uh, Russia and Ukraine, whereas other Africans and uh, Asian or other Latin American heads of state of government have said, yeah, well, we we condemned the war, but they, they did not condemn directly Russia. This was uh, done by the president of uh, Guinea-Bissau. Uh, but he said, uh, yes, uh, Russia is waging a uh, war of information. Russia is also uh, using blackmail over uh, food exports, especially uh, grain exports uh, from Ukraine, but also from uh, Russia, as a weapon, as a blackmail. And so he said that this could not be uh, accepted and that uh, Russia's ambitions uh, should be fought uh, not only in Ukraine, but in other areas, including in Africa. France 24's political editor, Mark Perlman. Mark, thank you very much.